Hey guys, how's it going? Good morning. Friday, 13. And we are here at the pickup here in Hamilton, Ohio. Picking up a load and we're taking this to Chicago Ford. Do you want me to back in door three? Right here. We're in Vallejo right now. I haven't been here yet. Kind of tight here, so as you can see, door number three, that's where we're going. Kind of tight, but I'm the only driver over here, so nobody is blocking me, but we'll, yeah, we'll duck in. Good thing there's no trailer here next to me. It'll be hard because it's kind of tight here. this way.
We got it. We got it. Get a slight attendance. Always. Do you want me to disconnect the airlines and put this lock on? guys Jake here and welcome back to another brand new video for you guys Friday 12 noon and we are here in Hamilton Ohio so picking up a load here in Valio and it's this load's gonna go to Chicago Ford it is 300 miles drive from here this is a direct delivery today but I don't have enough hours to make it there to Chicago because I only have like five hours and 30 minutes left on my clock and getting there it's like six hours and 30 minutes depending on the traffic so anyway this load is a drop and I could drop it tomorrow my dispatch told me that for as long as I can make it to my appointment time which is today at the pickup then I would be fine just dropping it just dropping it off tomorrow morning and yeah um, so tomorrow i don't know if they can give me a load because normally on the weekend it's kind of slow freight are, aren't available anyway on the weekend so yeah probably i'm gonna be sitting in chicago on the weekend saturday sunday but it'd be nice if they can give me a load to run on the weekends um, i still have 30 hours on my 70. let me check my hours Oh no, actually not 30. I only have 25 hours on my clock, so I could still run and probably um, just continue working uh, on the weekend and weekdays. So, I mean, I've been working since last week. Um, I did my reset last time that was on the weekend. So, I don't know if I'm gonna gain some hours on the weekend, like the next week. I could be using my recap hours so I love working so bills are coming up so we we really need to work so hard um, yeah nothing so much going on here guys um, um, this coming October is my birthday so I'm gonna work straight within this month through October I wouldn't I won't take a day off not until October uh, October 26 is my birthday so probably I'm gonna go on vacation for my birthday probably two weeks off because I'm gonna work from this month to September until the middle of October so probably I'll take off probably on the 20th or 23 between 20 to 23 and so I could be ready for my birthday i'm gonna celebrate my birthday with friends and i don't know 
so there's actually some of you ask me um, what company that I went to to uh, getting my CDL again I have said this in my freebies blog and whoever asked me that hopefully you can see this video so I started at CRST and Christian is asking that do you have to pay a front to get to tracking school and this is my uh, take actually here in the US you really don't have to pay a front for getting your CDL so I'm gonna give you guys a little summary here so when I get my when at a time I, I started at a time I went to school I didn't have any money of course you know I didn't have I didn't have five thousand dollars six thousand dollars paying the, the the cost of the, the tracking school but what they do is for as long as you signed up with a contract then you don't have to pay upfront however um, when you started earning let's say you started working um, they're gonna deduct that um, money from your paycheck every week because you get paid every week so basically you're you're paying it back the cost of the, the tracking school nothing is free but you don't really seem to feel it like you're paying it it's because the only deduction that they're gonna take from your paycheck off of your paycheck is probably 50 bucks a week so if you stay there for two years that's eventually uh, pays off your you know your tracking fee so when I was at TRST I finished my contract so I don't have to pay I don't have to worry about um, you know paying it the half of it um, I was there for like yeah about more than one year as far as as far as I can remember and then I moved to Swift transportation at Swift I was there for three years and yeah I am uh, it was a good company I mean it, it's a good company to start with I mean the good thing about that company is that they have a huge terminal so they, they have like 30 terminals all over US so like you as a company driver let's say you're gonna go to uh, to, a, uh, to a place or a city let's say New York or let's say California and then you don't find a parking around the area you can just go straight to the company and park there overnight or whatever you want to do so that's the good thing or an, uh, an advantage of these big companies out there the only pay the only time I quit out there it's because the pay is not really that much I started from 44 cents per mile where I can get it I can get more at any other companies out there let's say you can get like 65 cents per mile Swift does only pay 44 at a time I don't know um, now because it's been years but I would tell you guys that Swift transportation is not a bad company at all you may hear it out you may hear it on the on the road that oh Swift transportation is a bad company it's uh, it's you don't have enough training I could tell you that yeah the reason why they have so many accidents because I think their students they send their students on the road becoming a, a mentor for a one month experience and I don't think that is advisable and I, th I don't think that Swift think of that fully like you know it's it, it's the driver who made their company bad and at the same time their management probably because I don't think a month of experience driving a truck a semi truck and then have someone uh, you and have someone be in your truck and you train them a uh, one month experience is not really enough to become a trainer I could say that well before I moved to Swift um, I did have more than one year experience already at CRST so it wasn't new for me but yeah it, it's not a good company at all to start with I mean uh, dispatch are very consistent working with you uh, there are days that you're gonna be sitting for a couple days because of there's no freight available um, I mean I would say 50 50 you know like good uh, there's pros and cons but there's no such as perfect company out there so if you are a new car driver looking for uh, a tracking school I could recommend to go Swift transportation because they have 
they work they're affiliated with um, I forget the school but the it's not a, a swift academy but it's a separate building separate uh, uh, different name of their tracking school I think as far as I remember it is ASR is the name of the school so yeah I mean, if you're a rookie driver out there trying to apply for a job and becoming a truck driver and looking for a school, definitely I could recommend Swift Transportation. So yeah, and if you guys have more questions, just comment down below in this video and we can talk about that and we'll get back to you next time. So this is our vlog for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something from this video. And yes, I'll see you guys next time. And. Before I end this vlog, I just want to say thank you so much again to all of my subscribers out there for tuning in and for watching my videos and give me, giving me thumbs up and uh, I'm so happy reading your comments and yeah, again I will keep up, I will try to keep up with uh, updating you guys, uh, giving you guys more vlogs, more fun vlogs to watch, I appreciate that. So anyway. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like and share and comment down below in this video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye for now. Six hours later.